Welcome, everybody, back to a photography session. We have John Ashley on the line. Hello. And we will be going over composition and cropping today. Very excited. John has put together some great slides that are going to be very informative, I think. So the first one we're starting on. And just a quick review. We, we started with the, the technical side of photography, the buttons, and gained a few tools for our photography toolbox there, with, uh, <laughs> changing the shutter and the aperture and the oh. ISO. Well, today we are going to start working on probably what is the most important tool of all, and that's composition. Great. And tell us a little bit about um, these two photos side by side. Um, in, in composition, there there's no hard and fast rules, but there's some guidelines. Uh, there's two basic forms of composition, and then there's blends of these two. So with a formal, uh, formally composed photo, you have a either the left and right sides mirror, or the mm -hmm. top and bottom mirror, or even both can mirror, and that gives the the photo a feeling of stability or seriousness. Mm -hmm. uh, permanence. I think of it as as old and businesslike. <laughs> and, and then the opposite of that is informal composition, where your subject is placed off center. And if, have you heard of the rule of thirds before? Yes, I have become more acquainted with that rule in the last couple of weeks. Okay. Well, uh, with informal composition, we usually put the subject at one of the intersections of the rule of thirds. So if you can go to the next slide, it, it'll show that. And that's kind of like uh, the tic-tac-toe grid, right? Yep, I guess that pops up right there. Yep. Okay. So on the left, the formal composition, you can see if you draw a line down the middle, mm -hmm. um, left and right sides mirror each other. Right. And then the top and bottom don't mirror each other because they're different colors, but in visual weight, they're, mm -hmm. they're the same weight, so they sort of mirror each other weight-wise. On the right-hand side, the informal composition, the tic-tac-toe uh, rule of thirds, mm -hmm. you generally want to try to put your subject at those intersections where those green lines cross. So in this photo of, uh, what's the dog's name? I forgot. Linus. Linus, that's right. That photo of Linus, you you probably want people to look into Linus's eyes, and so you've got Linus placed exactly in the right place to um, guide the viewer to looking at Linus there. Mm -hmm. But it's also informal, so it, it gives a, um, it tends to infer an easygoing feeling to it. It's not solid or mm -hmm. old-fashioned. So right. two, two, different, two different ways to, to compose uh, photos. Definitely, and I, I have to admit that that was unintentional because when I, when I took this picture, um, I had not been, you know, told of the rule of thirds. So that was that was that was luck for me. <laughs> Maybe you're just a natural at it. <laughs> All right. So here's just the picture without John's um, guidelines on it. And what what do you think of when you see this picture? Well, in general, um, your eye tends to go to the brightest parts of the photo, so uh, my eye immediately goes to the sun, mm -hmm. the sunset, and then the second place it goes is to the clouds, the really bright red pink clouds. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then one. there there isn't anything that leads my eye away from the subject, so that's good. So it's a positive. Okay, good. Well, we'll come into here. Okay, yep, I see what you're saying now. So this is what my eye does. It first goes to the sunset, and then second goes to that the bright cloud above. And then if you go one more slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it pretty pretty closely again. You, the sunset is just off one of those um, cross hatches there, and then the the cloud is right on one. So that's and then good. We, yeah. Would you say that it's 
so I, I guess that is what you kind of just said was the light of the sunset, and then it almost leads you up into the clouds. So it's kind of a, a fluid motion for your eyes, not necessarily drawing your eye away from something you should be looking at. No, I, I think of it as the sunset as the primary thing. That's the main thing. And then after looking at that for a few seconds, my eye wants to bounce up and look at the clouds. Right, so yep. The, so the clouds are secondary to the sun. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we have this photograph. So I wonder where this is going to play in with that rule of third. Look <laughs> at it. <laughs> so just looking at this, can you tell if it's formal or informal or what it is? Well, it's. I would. I my instinct says informal, just because it's kind of a different view. But it's also formal in the way that it's almost perfectly. I guess the that center is up a little bit. It's not right in the center, but I'm gonna go with with formal. <laughs> um, you you are on the right trail. It's it's. A combination of formal and an informal. Okay. <laughs> you go to the, the the next slide. Oops. Yeah, the the brightest area is the sky there, and then the the parallax, the trees merging at a point a little bit above that. Those are the mm -hmm. where my eyes want to go. Mm-hmm. So if we go to the next slide and overlay some grids on that. Okay. So so left to right. The two sides mirror each other. Okay, yep. So it's formal in that direction. Mm -hmm. Then it's go to the next slide. Okay. Can we move to the next slide? There we oh. go. Oh. Yep, so sorry. now, now we're kind of <laughs> we're kind of back to the rule of thirds um, on the two uh, lines going horizontally. So this is a combination of formal and informal, which mm -hmm. is fine. That's a, that's a great way of doing it. And so one of your, your subject area, the brightest area, does fall on that cross hatch. Mm -hmm. So Okay. That was taken years ago, but it's one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken because it almost creates a little heart with that, that branch coming in. Yeah, I noticed the heart. I like that. <laughs> All right. So this picture, uh, I, I know, we, I think we talked about it in our introduction section, is as far as composition goes, it's, and I know there's no right or wrong, but it's not the best composed picture. Is that right? Yeah, if you think of composition in the terms of, uh, of music, um, like a symphony, okay. you know, there's all these different... There's you know five or ten or fifteen or twenty musicians, but if they were just all playing on their own, it wouldn't make any sense to the listener. But you have a composer who arranges the musicians to mm -hmm. come in at certain times and not at certain times, and then it, the music makes sense to everybody. And mm -hmm. photography is the same way. You have different subjects and different elements in your photo, and if you can try to arrange them in a way that makes sense to your eye. It's mm -hmm. more pleasing to look at than something that isn't composed properly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, this one is, it's just kind of, my eye doesn't quite know where to go. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of white areas. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in, in a lot of cases, you can't get everything where you want it, but you mm -hmm. can make small changes. So, let's... Let's go to the next slide and see. Yep. Well, I wonder if that is one that I just did not get in there. Do we have any more of this setting? We don't. I can. <laughs> uh, I can get a couple up real quick, though. <laughs> well, well, we can just talk about it. It's better than okay. that. So, um, to me, the. Well, I should ask you, you're the photographer, what is your primary subject here that you want people to see? Well, probably the bridge. Um, the bridge kind of leading off into the trail. That was the goal anyways. Okay. So the, the close or the near end of the bridge has sunlight on it, so it's bright. So that's a good thing. 
but there's also that bright patch in the sky above it, and to the right, there's a bright patch of ground. And on the right-hand side, there's a bright tree on the right border. Mm -hmm. So we can make a minor um, cropping tweak to this photo to improve it a little bit just by cropping enough to get rid of that tree on the right. Hmm, okay. Okay, I found the other picture. <laughs> so, Do you want to bring it up? Or? Yeah. Here we go. We're just working with a little delay. All right, so here, is this the one you were talking about? Mm, waiting. I have a very slow computer. <laughs> and I, th I think things are going... <laughs> Our delay is longer than usual. Okay. I'm still looking at the original. The original? Okay. Oh, it says video call ended. Oh. Huh. I wonder if our... Let's see. So you're, you're not seeing the ranch cam anymore? No. Not okay. funny. Let me just fire up the, oh, the, the laptop. <laughs> yeah, things have been moving a little bit slow. I know they were moving fast over here last week, but now they're... So can you see the, the photo with the either the green oh, it, lines or the cropping? So it says John has left the call. So here, all I'm going to send you another invite real quick. So you should get a, and then it maybe pick it up. Okay. Well, I've got the photos in my head, too, so if you can just tell me what's on the screen, I can talk about them. Okay. Uh, so it's the one with the rule of thirds, and then it has the circle around the primary subject, like you were talking about, with the light on the kind of the top of the bridge. And then that mm -hmm. secondary subject is that, that darker tree further back. Yeah, that's what my eye does when I look at the photo. I start at the, the front of the bridge, and my eye goes um, towards the right, towards the end of the bridge. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to try to minimize distractions uh, that might lead my eye astray away from those two areas. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that we can do pretty simply with this photo is cropping it just a little bit to get rid of that bright tree on the right edge. And that's where that one that you cropped, that's um, what you were kind of showing with that? Yeah. If you need to, you can hold your hand up to the, the right side of the screen and just cover that right that tree. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you the difference as well. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you kind of get the idea. Mm -hmm. you've, got a, you've got a band that's pretty good, but um, you have a trombone player that's it's all out of tune, and so you cut the trombone player off. <sighs> yep, that is. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm just going to try real quick sending this link to you again, and if it doesn't work, then we'll just move forward how we're doing. Okay. I'm just going to email you the link like we did in the beginning and see if it, see if you can click on it and come up. Um, but the next picture we have. So it's the, the photo of the fence line the back of Root Mountain Range in the back with kind of little white snow-capped peaks on it. And I know we've yeah, we talked about this one a bit in the past, about how, you know, it kind of, it, it's leading your eye away. That fence line is kind of leading your eye away from where you would want the viewer to maybe look. Yeah, that, that fence line is... Um, distracting to my eye because it leads my eye away from um, the, what I think is the subject, and that's the barn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when we talked about it before, you, you said you wanted the barn and the mountains in there, um, but I don't remember if you wanted the fence in there. Yeah, I think, I, and I was kind of thinking, oh, that might be a neat, like, a way to frame, you know, the mountains and the cabin, but the more that I've been learning in this um, mentorship, the more I've realized it, it totally distracts from 
the main subjects, which are the you know the mountains in that in that little cabin. Yeah. So um, the easiest way to fix that would be to take about three steps to your left and walk up to the edge of the fence. Mm-hmm. And, oh, okay. Uh, take the same same photo. So I I couldn't walk over to the fence, but I kind of faked it in Photoshop. Okay. Let's get. Okay. So this and then. Are you seeing anything, or it's still dropped? Oh, I'm back on chat. I mean, I'm on the the hangout. I'm trying to get on chat though. Oh, good. And you're seeing the image I have up now. I am. Oh, great, perfect. Okay, so this is what you just said, and then you did this. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. What a difference. <laughs> Yeah, so if you look back at the original one, your your eye is kind of bouncing all over the place. Mm-hmm. There's just too many things to attract your eye. Yeah. So by eliminating that, that fence and, and cleaning and the, the foreground up so it's not as distracting, right. you end up with the other, or something close to the other photo, which um, is, is more simple. It's just the, the right. subject of the, the ranch and then the... Uh, the mountains in the background as a secondary subject. Yeah, so that is this is a really nice, nicely cropped image. <laughs> and how yeah, did the, you? So did you just zoom, or how? What, what's your method for cropping? Um, well, that takes us back to one of our tools in our toolbox. If you remember mm-hmm. when we talked about ISO, mm-hmm. I said that in in general you always want to shoot with the lowest ISO that you can get away with. Mm-hmm. And, and this is why, because okay. if you crop an image and you're only using half of it, mm-hmm. you're essentially you're essentially doubling the amount of grain in the image, just like right. using an I, just like using an ISO that's twice as high. Mm-hmm. So by keeping mm-hmm. your ISO as low as possible, that gives you the the latitude to be able to crop it later on. Yeah, wow, well, that is. It's wild how that makes such a difference. Oh, where did 7A go? Okay, so I, I did not put the, the original, original picture of this, but this is, I think this will do for people getting an idea of what yeah. we're going for. <laughs> so what, I know uh, um, it's hard to work with a, uh, models and whatnot, but uh, what was your, your idea here? You know, looking at it right now, I would say I was trying to take a poorly composed picture, but when I took it, I think I I wanted to play around with putting him in, in different places in my frame, you know, because I think I took a couple of him to the which would have been right because his face would have been looking towards the most face in the picture. But in this one, it's just, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's not very pleasing because you're wondering, well, what's he looking at? I want to look over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you apply your uh, rules of composition, your formal and informal and rules of thirds and all that stuff, um, you kind of come up with confusion on this one, or at least I do. Yeah, so, so yeah. if the dog were to stand still, you could step to the right and recompose, rearrange your, your elements. Mm-hmm. So if we go to, I think, the next one. Let's see here. Oh, that's what you just said. Oh, yep. This one? Yep. Oh, wow, yeah. If you just stepped to the right, then the dog would have been close to the mountain, and you could have put them both on the, the cross hatches of the top thirds. Mm-hmm. And that um, helps the viewer understand you know, what's going on in the photo. Right, yeah. Wow. Oh, now, in the original, the, the sky and the, foregr- and the snow in the foreground are kind of almost the same weight. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know which one I'm supposed to look at in the original. So in the <laughs> in the, the recomposed one, I, I left more foreground than sky. Okay, yeah. I like that one a lot. 
Wow. This is really nice. Um, so this, the last one that I uploaded, I, somehow it got booted off, so bear with me right now while I'm going to get it up here. See if I can, all right, this guy's a little bit smaller. So here's the, and this one is out of order. Okay, so tell me about this photo. So this is another situation of Danielle trying to get creative. (laughs) (laughs) And looking at a room and going, huh, that's, you know, I, I love that old stove. And I just felt like getting a little bit of that old door in it. But looking at it, um, I mean, for the most part, I want to say my eye goes to the stove, mostly because there's that bit of light, but then there's also that big, huge light on the wall to the right before the stove. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and, and this, I mean, you, you've brought the, the whole orchestra with you. You've got all sorts of interesting things going on here. Mm-hmm. But they're all, they're all kind of competing with each other. Right, yeah. Like, have you ever gone to a symphony uh, and before it begins, they're all they're all warming up and they're all playing at the same time? Yes. <laughs> that's that's kind of what this photo does to my brain here. It's all yeah. different things going on at the same time. Yep. So one what? one option is to try to narrow it down and, and compose it um, so it's just one or two things per photo. Mm-hmm. And I think that's on the next slide. I'm sorry, the size of this one? Yeah, this is uh, the things that my eye bounces around between. Mm-hmm. I like the old stove. You mentioned that, that highlight on the right-hand wall. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, there's a large portion of the photo is taken up with the sand in the foreground. Mm-hmm. And then... And then that old wooden door is really cool. So my eye kind of rotates around on all four of these. Right, yeah. But it is kind of a, a jumble. Like, Yeah, it's almost a bit of a image overload. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cool, but it's kind of hard to comprehend. So you, yeah. this is... So there's the... Okay. So yeah, none of in the areas where they should be if you wanted your viewer's eye to kind of go there. Yeah, the, it doesn't fall into any any sort of um, typical composition either, so that's another thing working against it. Mm-hmm. So let's see. You, so we're on. Oh, we just did that one. There we go. Oh, so what's this one? Uh, It's formal and informal composition there. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So the left and right and top and bottom don't mirror each other, so... Mm Mm-hmm. It wasn't an informal composition, and it's not a formal composition. (laughs) Symphony warming up. <laughs> oh, I misspelled symphony. <laughs> oh, well. All right. That's what happens when you have a creative mind. Right, yep. <laughs> now let's get... Oh, my. This computer is being a challenge today because I wanted to get that those three that you are comparing. There There's with one slide yep. with three images. We got it. All right. So if we take the same scene, we can we can recompose either in real time with our camera or by cropping after we get home mm-hmm. to try to emphasize different things. And if you look at these three different photos, it's the same scene, but there are different things emphasized in each photo. Right, yeah. I like that. What, so... What one is your favorite out of those? Well, I like the the old door with the old stove. I think that's my favorite one out of those too. Yeah, gosh, and it is just taking um, what you did out made such a big difference. Just having 
to, in general, do you want a primary subject and a secondary subject? Um, in informal composition, it usually works well to balance an, uh, one large subject with a second smaller subject. Mm -hmm. But with formal composition, you typically are using just one uh, main subject. Okay. But of course, rules are made to be broken. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the, I I the idea here is that, you know, there's, without even moving, where you, it looks like you were kneeling down here, just by turning your camera slightly left, right, up, down, mm -hmm. you, you can make three or four different images out of the same scene. Right. Yeah, that's, I, I didn't, definitely didn't know this picture could be broken up into so many different, and every picture gives you kind of a different feeling, too. Mm-hmm. That's really neat. All right, so we did get, we are going to end up getting them all. Oh, bear with me. Here we go. So this picture, obviously we've seen this one before of Hawk, and as far as what I see when I look at it, it I think it works because you know your eye is going towards where the action is, and there's more space in front of where the action is rather than like that picture of Linus where it was you know cut off right past <laughs> <the> nose almost. <laughs> Yeah, Hawk isn't falling off the edge of the world. He's in a nope. good position there. <laughs> and then as far as, like, the shoreline, what does that do for you in, in terms of kind of composition goes? Um, one of the general rules is um, even in formal photography, you, in a formal composition, you don't want a line running down the middle of your image. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little... Uh, I, I would want to try to, I keep wanting to move that, that shoreline up or down on the distant shore um, okay. to make it higher or lower to get it get it out of the middle of the frame. Right, yeah, because it takes away from looking at um, Cazador, the horse's face. It kind of almost blends it in there, doesn't it? Yeah, if you go to the next slide, I think I circled some of those. Oh, yep. Oops. There we go. Okay. Primary. There's your primary. And then yep. to go to the next slide. Oops, not that one. <laughs> not it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for bearing with me today. Oh, my goodness. There we go. We're in threes, not fives. All right. Here we go. Is this the one? So you've got a primary subject, and then you've got three bright areas that compete with it. Um, but in this case, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. Right. Since there's, there is so much brightness. <laughs> three, okay, I promise I'll do the right one this time. I think with that, <laughs> this is the last one? I think so. Okay. So as far as, oh, he got on the good... Top there, though. <laughs> yeah, so um, top to bottom, you know, with your line down the middle, it it wants to be, you know, it's trying to be formal composition, but it really isn't formal. Mm -hmm. But left, but left to right, it's a, it's an informal composition. Mm -hmm. And so the cosador falls right on that that cross uh, on the left. So that's a good, a well composed photo. That's uh, right where you want the horse or or that cross could be between the horse's eye and the rider's eye. Yeah. And it's that. Actually, I played around with this one a little bit and tried cropping it a little to get that line out of the middle. Oh, yeah. And, but I, I didn't have any luck improving it. I always liked the, the original <laughs> best. So, so you did a good job with this one. Well, that's good to hear. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... Obviously, maybe being like putting my camera up a little more or doing it from a lower angle would have avoided that with that shore being right there. Yeah, I think uh, if 
you would have knelt down or got lower or closer, it might have uh, made it more interesting. And we'll talk about point of view, I think, next time. Perfect. Yes, that is a great segue into um, in point of view. To be updated, it'll either be on the following Tuesday or on the 14th. Um, and that will be the last of the emotional side of things. And then we'll have our putting it all together session on the 21st or the 14th. <laughs> all right. So just a, just a quick review. We had the, the three tools in our toolbox to begin with, and now we have composition. And so we have two basic forms of composition. And if you think about it as arranging music to make sense to your ear, and this yeah. composition in photography is you're arranging the elements, the subjects in your photo to make them make more sense in the final photograph. Yeah, that example you said about the, you know, the symphony all kind of warming up before really hit home for me and gave me a good image in my head and for you know, that the sound like, but looking at a picture. <laughs> yeah, our, our brain is, is programmed to try to make sense of, a, of an image instantaneously. So when we have to keep looking and bouncing around, it, it causes a little bit of a disconcerting feeling. Uh, yeah. when, a, when a photo is, is composed well, our brain knows exactly where to look, and it, it gives us... Uh, a much better feeling about the photograph. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, great. That was, that was a very informative session and definitely a lot. I, I mean, I think the, the technical side of things, you know, it's pretty, you know, there's, you can, you can do different combinations, but for the most part, you, you know the outcome you're going to get. And with composition, it's kind of, there's, you have to take in all of the other elements that are going on um, you know, depending on what you're photographing. Mm -hmm. And we added another tool to our toolbox with uh, being able to crop. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And check out the calendar for the updated um, schedule if we're going to have a session on the 7th or if it will be on the 14th. And thank you so much, John. Well, thanks for arm wrestling the computer there for me. <laughs> and we'll talk to you all next week or the week after. Bye.